the concept of image optimization is often talked about with regard to WordPress websites. What about the concept of adaptive images and WebP image format? Let's explore and understand this mix to make WordPress websites even faster with James Cantoni. So let's welcome James on the show and get started. Hi James, going, how are you? Good, good, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. You are welcome. So before we dive into the world of adaptive images and WebP image format and how they help in making our websites faster, why don't you give a quick introduction about your online life? Sure, sure. So uh, like most of us, I started off with a small agency building websites, whether it be for myself, for friends, family, whatever it is. Um, and then that kind of pivoted into things like SEO and additional design, whatever we had to do, kind of wherever, wherever someone needed it, we wear many hats and we, we followed that to just pay the bills or whatever it may be. Um, and then from there, uh, I realized that I, I wanted to do something more in the software aspect of things where you don't have to go out and get a, a new client every month or, or deal. Cause I'm sure a lot of us know that some of the requests that come in, uh, you're working around the clock, you're working their hours. I wanted to try to work my hours if I could. Um, so what, what ended up going from there was we were trying to do some, uh, my, my heart was with conversion optimization and things like that. So we're trying to make websites that automatically improve themselves. My, my goal is to help as many people as we can get websites that just perform better for you, whether it be speed, whether it be conversions, whatever it may be. Um, and I think we were a little ahead of, ahead of our time at that point, uh, back five, 10 years ago, when A-B testing was just a kind of a concept that only the highest percentage of websites are using. Uh, and even now it's getting wider, widely adapted. But I think uh, that kind of brought us into image optimization, saying that you can't A-B test or you can't do conversion rate optimization if people aren't staying on your website. And people are bouncing really quick if your images take too long to load, because nowadays websites are so rich with images and whatnot, they used to be just a page of text and, and it would load really fast, uh, even on the slowest speeds. But now with all these heavy images and higher resolution cameras and everything, um, you put a gallery, you put a WooCommerce product, whatever it may be, it's taken forever to load, especially uh, if you have a global mindset or global business there as well. Um, so so that's, that's kind of how we shifted from just doing websites to wanting to do that conversion optimization. But before that, before you can get to the users on the page, you really got to get your website loading lightning fast. Uh, and that's what we try to do with WP Compress here. And, and like you said, some of the major ways of doing that is the WebP, the adaptive images, and these next gen things, kind of the cutting edge of image optimization has, has been around since people do it in Photoshop and whatnot. But we really <laughs> want to get into uh, making it A, our goal is to make it easier for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, as, as automated and efficient as possible, uh, but also get those lightning fast speeds and, and it's optimization where we want to get the quality and the, the file size right. Um, because you, you can make anything load fast, but it will look blurry as heck, you know? So yeah. we want to make sure uh, it's looking good, loading fast, and everything's working well. So that's kind of how it transitioned. Uh, and now we're actually on V5. So we started V1 and, and kind of iterated as we go, uh, took out a lot of things, added a lot of new things, and, and now I'm really happy with where we are. So it's been, it's been a crazy journey. As, as everyone here, you kind of follow the paths, adapt, and evolve. Uh, and it, it's really cool to look back on it like that. So. Cool. So before we get on to the modern technologies and modern concepts like adaptive images and WebP format, let's take a little step backward and talk about the general WordPress ecosystem. Now, image optimization is still not on to-do list of many website creators, even new creators and few agency owners. They just would build a website on WordPress, slap a catching plugin, and they're done with it, like with a lot of people. Is yeah. it like due to lack of knowledge or the lack of importance that people still don't give to the image aspect or image optimization aspect on a WordPress website? Yeah, I think it definitely has to be on every every agency owner's checklist. And, and that's why we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, but I think a lot of it comes to either the time, it used to take a ton of time optimizing every image in Photoshop, saving for web exporting, going through that, if, you, if that was the way you were doing it in the past, or even just people, when you're building it, the web developer might have a, a sense for that when you're building it. You could use SVG images, you could use optimized images initially, um, but once the client starts uploading these massive images, just dragging and dropping, it, it really gets dangerous. So I think having an initial solution, it really should be at the top of everyone's checklist. It doesn't have to take a lot of time, uh, but also, 
getting that knowledge there so that you have a long-term solution in place when your clients are uploading images or when, if you have a VA or whoever, whoever's handling the website, um, it makes their life a lot easier and then you don't have to go in and spend all your time on that. So I think to your point, I think it is not necessarily a lack of knowledge, but a lack of prioritizing that you're trying to get the content right. You're trying to get the colors right. You, you want to make sure <laughs> to, to the client, they don't necessarily think about the speed you might, uh, mm -hmm. but they, they want to make sure that they're getting their message across and, and on the list of priorities, it's probably somewhere, somewhere lower down uh, once you have the page. Because you can have a blank page that's loaded lightning fast, the client won't be happy, you know. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that once you kind of finish your website, once all your creatives are out there, let's actually get the performance there and, and make it so it's uh, you invested all this time, all this money, whatever, into this website. Let's make it work for you as best as possible. Now, I believe WordPress by default optimizes every image that you upload to 75% quality setting. Is that correct? So uh, we, we looked in and checked at this. It does it to 90% currently okay. um, for JPEGs. And how, how that works um, is it does it regardless. So if you optimize in Photoshop before and then upload it, it will still do that. So that's why a lot of people used to have blurry images and whatnot because it would over compress it like that. Um, so that's, that's a good start. But compressing the image is one thing. They use just one quality setting, whatnot. So we kind of take that. We add over compression prevention so you don't get those blurry images. We have four additional algorithms on top of things and adapt for the traditional WordPress uh, options there as well. So you bypass that 90% optimization or you do the optimization after the 90% is done? So we're optimizing. It depends what setting you use. Honestly, if you're doing the optimization on upload, we'll bypass it and do it ourselves. If you're doing okay. it to already uploaded images, we can't really revert it, uh, but we account for it at that point because we know kind of when it was happening uh, and make sure it's optimized to the set. But the thing with optimization is that's the, we like to separate optimization and compression, right? Compression, you can compress any file, 90%, 70%, whatever quality setting you want. Uh, but that's not, that's not going to get you a stunning looking image. That's going to, it's going to shrink the file size. But again, it's going to compress the pixels and whatnot. So we, we actually run it through, like I said, four different algorithms we're working with um, and, and some internal proprietary stuff that gets this image so that it's, you can just upload it as much as you want. You can upload the massive one. You can upload the Photoshop one. We kind of identify everything and make sure not only is it small enough to load fast, uh, but some of the formats we're talking about later, some of the advanced uh, features that come along with it that actually optimize the delivery of it to the user not just give you a smaller media library. Yeah, and that's where I think adaptive image concept comes into the picture. Like now for a very newbie who doesn't know what adaptive images is, like how would you explain this concept of adaptive images to that person? Sure, so what we try to do is get the correct image, whether it be size or format or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So it's adaptive in that sense to the device that's incoming. So you have your visitors, whether they're visiting on their desktop computer, a laptop computer, a mobile device, a tablet, whatever it is, you have the incoming traffic, right? Mm -hmm. We want to serve the correct image as, as best as that we can, uh, the ideal image for that situation. So it might be uh, resizing it for mobile. So you have a smaller, a smaller size for mobile. Uh, it might be like you talked about having the WebP. Uh, we'll get into that, but for certain browsers, it might be having a retina image. So you can shrink things, but you also might want to have the 2x for a retina so, image. For example, there's an image, say a hero Im section has an image, say 1000 pixel wide on a yes. desktop layout. So how would that behave on tablet or uh, mobile with regard to considering adaptive image concept in there? Exactly. So we would see the viewport of that. So the actual screen size of say that mobile device, say it would be 480 or something like yeah. that. It, it varies depending on the, on the phone and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but we would make sure that your image is no larger than that going into it or else you're essentially, uh, if you think about it, if, if you had a, a kind of a square quadrant, right? A 480 image is only about 25% of the file size of a thousand pixel image. Even though it's half the pixels, it's, it's kind of like pizza diameters or things like that where the area is, is much longer. So you're loading way too much additional file size that you don't need to be loading um, if you're loading the thousand pixel image when you have to load a much smaller one, about 25% of the file size there. And, and like you said, if it's on a mobile device, typically the cell service uh, is going to be slower than your in-home internet connection or whatever. So th those extra pixels, that extra file size and that weight to it 
uh, really drags it down, making it so you're just looking at your phone the whole time and, and the site's not loading. They're off to a competitor already and uh, <laughs> they, they won't even see the words that you, you spent on this website, you know, all the, all the hard work you did. Good selling point here, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so we add a, a thousand pixel wide image. So when we upload it, it will add the variation, say for seven, six, eight pixel for tablet or 300 or 400 pixel within the source code and only load that on demand when that page is open on that specific device. Is that what adaptive image is? Correct. So that's, that's how it works. We have two modes actually, live and local. That's how it works with the local mode. Okay. Um, and with the live, it actually identifies the width of the container and resizes it on the fly to make sure you have the best. It's, it's good to have the source set and everything like that um, for the, the, within your theme, within the WordPress ecosystem, it works very well like that. Uh, but with custom containers and, and the live mode, we're actually able to identify the exact size of, of what needs to happen and, and shave you every pixel that we can, every percent there as well. Um, and, and in that case, you don't actually have to degrade the quality as much if you're saving it by serving the correct size image and things like that. So it's 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 a pretty cool system we got going on there. So putting WP Compress into focus, like how does WP Compress execute the uh, adaptive images feature within it like what user has to do from his end to make sure it works when using so WP compress the, the cool thing about it the beauty of it is we want to make it as effortless as possible for everyone mm -hmm. uh, so when you sign up once you hit you enter your api key you create your account link your website whatever it is mm -hmm. you're good to go it's okay. all set up for you your website's automatically using we have the cdn urls which we'll talk about later um but everything's working for you on our infrastructure if you want to locally optimize it, it's just one click, you switch to local mode, uh, and then you can toggle adaptive images. Everything's one or two clicks and you can get, uh, it's customized for you. If you want to turn this adaptive images on, one click. If you want to turn it off, one click, exactly. And you can kind of switch back between what you want to do. Because I asked, asked this question to you because there are others, image optimization solution where you want, if you want to use adaptive feature, you need to add extra add-ons and you know stuff. No, nope, absolutely included. Yeah, right there, right in the main dashboard for you. Okay. Uh, in one click, you can turn it on or off. And it's enabled by default or a user has to? Yeah, it, it's enabled by, so right when you get in there, it enables you in live mode um, and you're good to go, but you can go in and, and configure it as, as much as you want. Or It's very simple. We, we really try to keep it as easy as possible for everyone. Yeah, because if understanding this concept on a concept level for a normal user would be difficult and even, you know, figure tinkering out the settings to make sure it works. But when you have it working by default, because most people won't even tinker with any settings, they will just turn it on and it's good to go. That's, that's really cool that you've thought about that part. Like, yeah, we want to do this. We want to do all the thinking for you. So you can just turn it on and you're good to go. And then that's why, like I said, you have your checklist of everything to do when you're building a website, one, two clicks, you're done you're onto the next thing already. So that, that's just a big check right there. And does this adaptive image optimization and the concept of resizing and loading image uh, as per the size of the device work with every image format, including the normal JPEG, PNG plus SVG? Yeah, so right now it works for JPEGs um, and PNGs. Okay. SVG will automatically resize based on it anyways. That's, that's how they, they typically work. Uh, They'll scale to whatever the container is automatically. It's, it's basically built in there, uh, which is pretty cool. But I, I think the, the big thing is, yeah, it, it does the JPEG, it does the PNGs. Um, we even do GIFs as well. And it really depends on the device coming in. So you can you can have all your thumbnail sizes, but like you said, if, if a user uploads a thousand pixel image, you want to serve it on a 480. Mm -hmm. We have users that are uploading 5,000 pixel images. Uh, I've seen it all. On, on these it. big high resolution cameras and everything. They just drag it into the folder. You got an eight megabyte file and you're wondering why your website takes 30 seconds to load. It's like I had, 10 of them. On I had a goof up last week only. I asked for a client for one image and that person sent me one JPEG image in a PSD format of size 115 MB. And I was I like, I saw that. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, you need, you need a whole processing center just to open that file. It's like, and, that's great. but I'm a Photoshop person. So I, took it in Photoshop, resized it, optimized it, and it became like 250 KB image out of 115. But then again, lack of knowledge. And again, your expertise, you are not supposed to expect client to know all these things. So Exactly. That's, that's and fine. imagine doing that for a thousand images on the website. Yeah, that would be a full-time job right there. 
<laughs> yeah. Now with every new feature, every new technology, there are a few issues. Like, are there any known issues with using adaptive images on WordPress websites? Like image not loading correctly or blurry or something like that? Or is it all yeah, good? Yeah. So the, the only issues that typically come up um, would be if you have some sort of, uh, say you have a gallery that's, re that's trying to crop the images via CSS. So we could, we could identify the width of a container, but if you're trying to do it via CSS afterwards, uh, the, we identify that it's say a uh, hundred pixels wide and then you try to stretch it to get a full height image or something like that. And we have workarounds and advanced settings to sort this out so you don't have any issues. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some cases where uh, based on the width, if we search just for the width of it and then you try to crop the image via CSS or a lot of galleries and um, sometimes WooCommerce does it. But we, we obviously created workarounds for it. But one developing the, the technology, obviously you run into a few things that like why are they showing up here or it's trying to show a hundred pixel image in a big space and, and it looks blurry at first, but everything's kind of been worked out. And uh, it, it was kind of cool developing it as well because you get to see how we can find that optimal balance, all optimization, finding that balance of, of size and quality there. So it's, it's a pretty cool, cool process there. But yeah, no, it, it's built into a lot of themes as well and you can use it pretty much in any situation. Uh, and if not, like I said, it's a one click toggle and we have advanced settings if you need to. So. Just curious, like, a lot of people these days use SVG format images and yes. do they do they actually need image optimization solution not just with WP Compress but any other or they are just uploaded and most or image optimization solutions will ignore SVG optimization or do they yeah, optimize we, it? We actually ignore them as well because tip, typically in good practice an SVG won't be more than two three KB. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you could tr obviously you can miss configure something and, and try to save a JPEG as an SVG, it won't do anything. It won't work for you, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, well, at least it won't scale it. But for, for pure vector art like that, um, they're typically small enough, fast enough, and scale themselves. So it's a great format to add to your repertoire if you're not using it at all yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we tend to use it for, for everything that we can. But then for the things where you need screenshots, or you need photos, or you need product images, or renderings, whatever it is, you can't really do those in, in SVGs. You have to do them in whether it be... Um, a PNG, a JPEG there with the transparency. So I think uh, SVGs is a great file type to have, but we do ignore them because they kind of do their own thing. Yeah. And we are mostly used to two formats like JPEG and PNG. But yeah. besides SVGs, there's another one now, the WebP image format. So yes. why don't you explain what this new thing is all about? Well, it's not that new, but it's still new for most people in at least WordPress yes. ecosystem. It's definitely new enough, yeah. So it's it's uh, a next gen image format from Google. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really really incredible thing because you can get essentially better compression levels, better optimization to it, uh, smaller file size, and faster loading times because they kind of process it uh, better. So it's basically we can convert your images, whether it be a JPEG, whether it be a PNG, whatever it is, to this new format, um, and and make sure that it gives you a few extra benefits that we can get into in a moment about that. Um, but it, it really adds a lot of extra benefits to your website. And the best part about it is the variability that you could use with it, not just automatically converting everything to that format. Okay. Let's talk about the benefits then. Perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> so how does it help? Like, I believe it opens really well on web browsers. That's one natural thing that it Oh, works fine and uh, you know displays fine in the web browser. Other than that, what are the benefits of using a web image format as in is the usual JPEG or PNG? Sure. So in the terms of what we do at WebP is we'll generate them for you, but we'll only serve them in the adaptive images format kind of, mm -hmm. that we'll only serve them to the browsers that accept them. You can't serve a WebP to Safari. It will just be a blank empty box there. And you'll try to do that and your users Come will say, where on. Saf images? Safari is new internet explorer. <laughs> exactly. Yes. But even, even Firefox, whatnot, some, some browsers you can't, are, are not compatible with WebP. I'm sure at some point they will be, but right now it's mainly Google Chrome, but you can use it on desktop, you can use it on mobile. And it just, they, they seem to load faster. You don't necessarily get significant savings. You might get 10, 15% savings um, over the traditional JPEG, but they just load faster based on the actual timings we've been testing. Uh, as well as you're able to keep higher qualities and resolutions in there with the same file size. So it, it, it's pretty cool in that sense of it. Um, but what you have to do, you have to really be careful jumping into, oh, it's WebP, it's this new, beautiful technology. You can't just convert everything to WebP because then, like I said, and like you mentioned, 
your images won't show up on, on half the browsers out there. Even though a lot of people use Chrome and whatnot, um, it's optimized for Chrome because Google created this format as well. This doesn't work in Firefox? Uh, it, it should. I have, to, I have to double check on that. But I'm pretty sure I know it works in Chrome and I know we have issues in Safari. Uh, uh, and and it we... Works, it works in that, that new browser that Microsoft launched. I forgot the name of it. Edge, uh, was it? Yeah, they've replaced Edge with something else that is based on Chromium, Chrome, you know, platform. They recently released it. I forgot the name of it. So I assume it would work there as well because it's using the Google Chrome base code to build. Yeah, so, so essentially we, we make sure that it only loads in the browsers that support it, okay. uh, no matter what. So you don't have, I know we're for educational reasons, <laughs> yes, but, but users won't have to worry about that. But you do if, if you don't have a solution that automatically uh, adapts it like that. So it's, it's a great image format to have, but you want to make sure you're serving it in the browsers that support it. Um, and I, I honestly might not know every single one because I know we just do that mm -hmm. automatically, you know? And do they behave similarly for browsers that are opened on tablets and mobiles? I guess Google Chrome on tablet and mobile will display them absolutely fine as compared to Safari. Yeah, and that'll do fine as well and, and it will just optimize it on there and like I said we will identify the browser identify the device uh, and it will work on that as well yeah but Safari on so you could have the same device whether it be a desktop whether it be a phone whatever it is and just it's browser based it's not even device based it's not based on your connection you can do on two different things and, and get served two different versions of the image so you have all the checks and balances in the background so if it's Google Chrome it will load the WebP format. If it's not Correct. Google Chrome, doesn't support it, will load the default optimized JPEG or PNG version, right? Correct. So how optimized, do you, resized, all of that. And do yeah. you arrange these images into separate folders where user can delete or interact with that data? Because I assume that obviously when you're optimizing images and saving the versions, it does you know add bulk to the whole image library on your website. In yes, the definitely. So the, the, a lot of the point of image optimization is there's the, the server side benefit too. Like you mentioned, you save a lot of storage if you're just optimizing your local library. Mm -hmm. So again, we have two versions. We have live and local all built into one plugin. Mm -hmm. um, and the live mode, actually, everything's on our premium infrastructure. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, when you optimize it, the web P's are all saved on our end and it will serve from there for you effortlessly. Um, if it's on your end, there's just a toggle as well. You can turn web P on and off uh, and it will either generate it or not generate it while you're you're using it um, and it's very simple and it's in the it's in the media library folder but again we'll we have options to offload the original image so if you have that five megabyte image that's original uh, you can offload that we'll back that up for free for you so you'll only have the, the much smaller faster optimized images and thumbnails on your website uh, and then the bulk of it is offloaded so that you can restore it anytime if you want to because we want to make sure you're okay um, but you you also save a ton of storage space on your website and that, all that server space there's local backups as well for anyone who wants to is is shy with uh, using other infra third party infrastructure. But with our our live mode, it's a lot faster. We have everything gets to be consistent because there's you've seen so many WordPress websites. Everything seems to be so different on every install uh, that we wanted to make it as consistent as possible, as fast globally for everyone, um, and that allows for the CDN as well, which is a, a phenomenal aspect of things too. So. Just to summarize, WebP is mostly for faster image loading and clarity rather than reduction, big reduction in the file size, right? Correct. Yeah, it's, it's not a massive change, maybe 10, 15%, depending on the image. Um, but it's, it's definitely the speed increases, like you said, and the clarity can increase as well. And so any, it's, it's definitely and, one to have, We're trying to save every inch. So. And any known issues with WebP image format other than few browsers not supporting it? Yeah, other than the few browsers, there's not nothing crazy uh you can't necessarily open it in certain things so you have to open it in the browsers you can't just open it into like a, a preview so a lot of computers if you download it or whatnot um the tools might not be as accessible with it so that's the only other thing but that's why we make sure we keep the, the png the jpeg the webp whatever it is so that you're using it's basically a tool you can use and you want to use the optimal one you want to use the best one that you can um so if you're editing the image don't try to do it in the web page because a lot of things might not support it on your desktop or whatnot either. So I think, like you said, once it's on the internet, it's good to go and we'll handle that. Um, but it, it's definitely uh, something you want to be adding and, and definitely incorporating pending uh, you have the browser checks in place.
now someone listening to this and getting excited about web p format must be thinking like hey is there any converter where i can convert my jpeg image to a web p and see how fast it loads is there one like not using wp compress but just like an offline converter is it any, is there any tool to convert those images not, honestly not that i know of because we use wp compress for it and i haven't really dove down that avenue to see what what there is i'm sure there's a converter for everything out there. Um, I'm sure with a, with a Google search, you can find something, but yeah, I don't necessarily know, know of anything directly for WebP. But then again, you want to be careful with serving it to the right browsers yeah. and making sure you have all those checks in place. Yeah, because WP Compress has all those checks and balances, so it will load image only, which is supported in certain devices or certain browsers. Exactly. Now, adaptive images, WebP format, all brand new. Anything else that's brand new and kicking in the image optimization world? So a, a lot of uh, a lot of places, and, and us included, have been going towards the CDN aspect of things built in in a live optimization mode. So we've actually recently added the live optimization. Uh, it's kind of the new thing in the space where you want to make sure everyone has a global mindset. You're you might have your server, whether it be in London, whether it be in Singapore, wherever it be, wherever it is, you want to make sure that someone from across the world doesn't have the, the latency or doesn't have these delays and load time or the time to first bite there, whatever it may be, that can absolutely, even if you have the smallest locally optimized images, just transferring something over that sheer distance there uh, can really slow down your site. So we, we have actually a built-in CDN uh, as well in the live mode, and that really just gets you to have uh, your images distributed everywhere that need, they need to be with location. Basically, for those who don't know what a CDN is, um, it's going to have essentially copies of your, your images or copies of your files, whatever it is, in multiple locations across the entire world, so that when a user comes into it, similar to the adaptive images, when a device comes into it, it serves them the ones closest to them. So you remove the latency, you remove uh, a lot of the, the different, the time that it actually takes to get them that image, uh, or that file, or it could be J, um, JavaScript, CSS, whatever it is. Uh, so we actually build that into it so that once you have the hybrid, the combination of the WebP, the adaptive images, the CDN, everything kind of coming together with the optimization, we get load times as fast as seven milliseconds across the world. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's incredible once you stack everything uh, and, your, and your tools together. So th that's the thing. If you have, like I said, if you have a server somewhere in, in North America and you're trying to serve something to Sydney, Australia, because you have a visitor coming in, it could take them 10, 15 seconds just to load that. So we, we want to reduce that uh, as well as optimize the image based on the device and, and add all those cool things like WebP. It's just adding and stacking and building so you have the best experience for your user and the fastest performance overall. Just curious which hardware CDN infrastructure you use for your CDN. So we're, we're actually using a hybrid it's of Google Cloud and Bunny CDN. We have a hybrid uh, infrastructure there and uh, we're getting pretty pretty incredible load times on top of everything else. It's the whole system for that. So it's, it's really incredible. Yeah. Both of them are very popular. I've heard Bunny CD a yeah. lot of times. So. Yeah. They're both top 10 rated there too. So yeah. Google cloud is obviously there. Obviously. Google, right? So yeah. Awesome. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They're everywhere. Even in web B, right? Not even in the air. Them. They got the balloons and everything too. So even if they don't have a, an infrastructure, they're there. <laughs> Okay, cool. So let's switch gears and talk about your toolbox. So which are your current five favorite tools that power your online business, obviously, other than WP Compress? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so I love, we use Crisp a lot. That's one of my favorite things. It's a, it's a live chat software. Um, so that's the, in the gauge of WP Compress. If anyone has an issue, they just chat in. And uh, on there, we have other agents and, and we just respond to chat support. So it's a really incredible tool to have on the website and you get a lot of feedback from users or, or someone mentioned something's down before we even identify it. It's just having that community and that live chat support um, that really, really helps. Like that's probably the number one, one tool I use uh, on a daily basis just for sheer impact of the business. Cause if people have questions, issues, um, see a promo they liked and have a question about it, you really get that one-to-one -one connection. And if you're talking to someone who's, behind the website, uh, it adds a level of credibility as well. And, and you get to know your clients as well as the clients get to know you there. So it's a, it's a pretty cool experience having, having that software. Um, and I, do you want me to go into the other four now or do you, you have any no, questions on that? You, can do, you like, do you use any live chat software or anything like that or not yet? Nope. And I've, there are so many. There's, I think the most popular one is Intercom. Yeah. But 
I personally don't like communicating with the service provider from a live chat. I think uh, I I only, last time I can contacted a service provider while live chat was with Moosend. I don't know if you've heard about that. Moosend yeah. is an you know, is this like a Mailchimp competitor kind of a thing? So they use it. I think they use Drift chat box with that and it was pretty handy it remembers your charts and it emails you and it's kind of good so i guess crisp also works on that similar lines yeah they're, they're all very similar i think it really depends on, on a the size of the company you're dealing with and kind of their volume uh because if you're if you go to our website at least you're getting directly to me most of the time and i'm, I'm here to help i can do kind of wear many hats and do whatever i have to do to help you out um but if you're going to some some of the larger companies they have the trouble yeah. trying to you have Rating to talk list. to six managers before you get anything and then yeah. whatever it is exactly you get that there. yeah it works for smaller companies but for bigger i guess or those who have more not just bigger those who have more support requests i guess exactly good old, good old email would be a better option yeah because then you can respond at your your leisure yeah. there okay um, is number two here yeah, so so on top of that, uh, I I like to use we use like Slack for communicating as well. I think internal. I hate it. What? It's a time I drain. I, it's a time drain. Ever since I stopped using Slack, I've saved so much of my time. Really? Okay, <laughs> I'll give I'll give you that. Um, no, I don't like to check it often because obviously, whenever I check it, there's more work. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, but but other than that, I I think that's a really big help. Uh, on top of Honestly, what, what we're using, so um, I would say that the page builders are, are a really big aspect of things that I know. Um, I, I use Elementor pretty much daily. Uh, I, I use it daily. I was originally using uh, WP Bakery, switched to Elementor because we had some design that needed it. Um, yeah, I see your reaction. <laughs> uh, but, but what was happening was um, ever since that, it's, but again, they're also, whether we were using Beaver Builder at some point. Any it depends on whether it's the client's website. I go to another website. I have um, other companies that need our help and they use Thrive or what, whatever they use. They're all kind of point and click at this yeah. point. Um, but we, but you kind of have to stay consistent in what you are. So I use that and they have all the add-ons and whatnot. Love that. Um, and then some cool things I've been using actually. I've been using, uh, it's called Undraw. I don't know if you've, you've seen that. Undraw, like really Undraw cool. CEO. Yep. Really, really cool. You get uh, the the isometric graphics there. You can change all the colors. Love that. And it's MIT license. Yeah, it's phenomenal. <laughs> that's, that's really, really cool. It makes you, it, if you don't necessarily aren't a crazy designer, you don't love Photoshop as much as as much as we do, um, you just, <laughs> it kind of does a lot of the work. You, you can have professional presence without having to do all these graphics yeah. and whatnot. And it provides you SVG. Actually, you can open SVG in a uh, photo editing software like uh, you, Affinity Photo plays really well with SVGs. So when you open it, you can actually change color and style of every small thing that is there in that file because it opens an SVG as sort of a layered. It's not layered, but you can actually point and click on certain specific it's areas. of section, yeah. Exactly. Even though uh, that Undraw website does give you two color options to build mm -hmm. your colors. You scheme, scheme color, yeah. But you can still make them more refined in a... Again, you are not a Photoshop person, but in case yeah. someone wants to do, I do it often in, I, I have Photoshop, but I don't know. I, whenever I have to edit SVGs, I prefer Affinity Photo. It works a little yeah. better there. No, that's definitely, and then you could obviously use like Illustrator as well, but I, yeah. being a Photoshop person, it's, it's, there's certain quirks in going to something like Illustrator, so that's why Affinity would be great for that. Yeah, yeah. it's a similar user interface. So what's next? Yeah. Uh, what's next? So on that theme, I've been trying to use uh, a lot of files a lot too recently, uh, which is basically, it's like having the undraw, but giving you the animation to it too. It gives you the JSON format uh, and it actually works in one of the Elementor plugins. So that's, that's kind of similar there, but that's what I've been, I've been really, it, it just makes the pages pop a little more. I like that. Um, and then honestly, just core, core tools for the business. Like you said, we're, we're always in, oh, I'll give you this one, uh, cloud app all the time. Um, because just you, for a user, whether I'm on the chat support, you send a screenshot saying, Oh, yeah. is this what it looks like to you? Is this what not? You send it to the team saying, this is an issue. You can mark it up however you want. Um, so I, I love that as well. And then screen recordings, if I got to do anything like that and do help documents on it, whatever it is. So, so that's pretty cool there as well. 
Awesome. So any recommended web hosting service that you prefer or you recommend others to go to? So, so we currently use Cloudways um, and we've been very, very happy with them so far. RunCloud is great as well. Uh, it, it, there's plenty of, plenty of great options. I think the biggest thing is if you stay away from a lot of the, some of the shared hosting, <laughs> you kinda, like that's why it's, if you have a semi-managed cloud system like that, whether it be $10 a month, $20 a month, invest in your business. I think that's going to make a huge difference versus being on the, the 195 a month plans or whatever it is. If you're trying to have a, a serious business there as well. Um, so that, that's what, yeah, we currently use Cloudways. We use Google Cloud as well. Uh, but that's not necessarily the user, the, the most user friendly there um, <laughs> going, going into GCP. It's not even, it's half as friendly as, as AWS even. And that's still a, a beast to get into. Um, but yeah, so if you use, use those, kind of if you're starting out a managed a managed solution that still has a fast infrastructure for not not crazy prices you don't have to say i'm going to have a million viewers i got to get the the ten thousand dollar a month plan thousand dollar a month plan you just kind of you can scale as you go i think that's a yeah. good good option there and then one of the the biggest um well one of the biggest softwares i've been recently getting into kind of what, what's been on my checklist has been we've really been using ClickUp a lot um, to really actually manage everything because what, what happens is we, we were managing in Google Docs, we we're managing in Slack, Skype, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and everything gets lost. You, you don't have the files. So I think having some sort of task manager, whether it's ClickUp, Trello, um, Asana, wh whatever you want to use, um, any project managers, I see tons of them being posted daily even, but what, whatever uh, you use, as long as you organize your thoughts, get them out there, I think that's the biggest kind of recommendation because then you can hold yourself accountable, hold yeah. the team accountable and, and kind of see the development. Uh, Cause there's always going to be another issue. There's always going to be another improvement you got to make. You're always going somewhere if you're, if you're constantly innovating, but you want to make sure you're, you're finalizing what you have to and, and you can get lost in, in the future and the roadmap and the vision rather than saying, Oh, we skipped this entire point. What's, and then you find out about it from a month later, uh, a month later, you know? Okay. So. Uh, any recommended email marketing service? that you use so in your we, business? We use Sendy currently, um, just because it's it's pretty affordable based on it based on when you send it out. It's based on uh, Amazon SES. SES, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's I think it's ten cents per thousand or one one cent per thousand. It's something something relatively affordable if you're not trying to pay thirty dollars a month every I, month for I guess unlimited it, I guess it's self hosted, right? You need to host it on your Yeah, site. you have to you have to set it up yourself and self host it. Um and you have to pay annually for updates, but I, I don't think we've done that yet. I think I gotta update get on that. <laughs> and it um, works. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm on I'm on an older version, but we're we're enjoying it right now. Uh, I think I'm gonna upgrade soon. But if you don't like I I tend to be have a marketing background or whatnot. I can do custom HTML emails if we need them, whatnot. It's not like the, the MailChimp where you point click, you have the heading, you're good to go. Um, this is more, a little more bare bones, but it's not as bare bones as just sending it through the server. <laughs> just just Linux mails or whatever you're doing there. So I think it's a nice, uh, it's a nice interface to have. I love it for the affordability as well. Uh, but it really depends where you are and, and, and what your, what your purpose is. Right. Cause if you're trying to send mails, Frequently, you might want something that has a more favorable rate for you or whatnot. And email delivery aspect, is it good like in this setup? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's based on the reputation of the Amazon IP and everything. So we have our IP set up there. So it's, it's great for us. Um, I do like it. What, I've been seeing you, you've had some phenomenal emails lately as well. I'm seeing you've been, been a lot of updates for the content creators and, and everything you're doing. Uh, smart web creators there too. So what, what are you using? I'm sure the audience knows. Well, <laughs> well they already know it, but still I, you, I, I've been a MailChimp person for quite some time. Then I went okay. to Moosen. I bought their lifetime deal and all that stuff. I spent three, four months trying to figure it out. It works, but the email delivery aspect was kind of disappointing. So I went, someone suggested go to MailerLite. So now I'm happy and settled with MailerLite. It works. Okay. It works yeah. like charm. It has, it is sort of a better version of MailChimp and it's pure value for money. Even if you, you know, as of now I'm on a free plan, but even if I pay and go on a pay plan, it's, it, it doesn't cost that much. The price is such a value. Like you hardly pay $15 for 2000 or 3000 subscriber, like, which is nothing. If you compare yeah. it with two bigger complicated solutions like ConvertKit, 
I'm sure they are they are good. Uh, ConvertKit is really good. Active Campaign is good, but they are too powerful for what I want to use. For you know, most people don't need to use those all the bells and whistles they come yeah, with the automation Make, aspects and mail light has automations it it has all the integrations even i don't you hardly use automations in mail light like i only use basic automated automations and it has it does have automation obviously not to the level of what you would find on active campaign or even convert kit but yeah. for normal communication and tagging sending uh, you know running a drip sequence and all that you know, even this would sound a little geeky to someone who's new, but someone who's already there, these are like basic things and you can easily do in MailerLite. The best thing I like about MailerLite, it's simple, it works, and the delivery aspect is really good. So, and it's value for money. Once you cross, say, 5,000 or 10,000 subscribers, you don't have to go and look for alternative because you're going to see a big monthly bill there. It's like exactly. the bill is hardly for if you have 5,000 subscribers, I'm sure you can make a lot of money from them considering yeah. the amount you pay. So my favorite is MailerLite as of now. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I'll definitely, uh, I've heard of them. I'll check it out further because because Sandy's pretty bare bones and I, I definitely want to get into it. I think for if you have big email list, MailerLite would work for you as well, provided you are not looking for very fancy automations and all. It has all the basic automation that you need. I'm sure since you're using Sandy, Mailer Light will provide you certainly more automation than what Sandy yeah, will yeah, give yeah, you. So yeah, it's like, right. yeah, you should try it. A lot of people have jumped from Mailer Light, uh, Mailchimp to uh, Mailer Light, and they've been happy. Mailchimp is also good; it works, but their pricing is crazy. Like what they did with recently with the pricing update, it it throws out a lot of people out of business. Like if yeah. you don't pay that price for, obviously they are trying to become click funnels and all that by introducing. They've introduced like you know hosted landing pages and all that fancy so they are like in a confused zone they, their positioning was more of a you know starting starter level email marketing solution but now they are adding features of a level of click funnels and all that stuff so they have actually shaken up their market maybe they wanted people at the lower level to go off and they only wanted to concentrate on enterprise i don't know what they're thinking all about but certainly the pricing is enterprise now so there's that Anyways, last question. Any upcoming tool or service that has caught your attention I recently? Um, so upcoming, I would I would have to say, well, the WP Compress V5 is upcoming. That's a really incredible <laughs> one. Love that one. Um, that's gonna release very shortly. But no, as for, for things we like I said, click uh, click up is one of the things we've just recently implemented. And then for some of the some of the cutting edge things like um, I think the, the Lottie files is one of the things that I just heard about the other day. Uh, Cause it's like, and I heard about Undraw the other day too. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little behind on the cutting edge stuff, but I think, uh, I think a lot of what's coming up um, is whether you do things better or whether you do things completely new and whatnot. I think you kind of have to find what works best for your business. And, and the biggest things that we use for productivity are just keeping us accountable, especially uh, being on our own schedule and whatnot. Um, you, you really have to find something that keeps you accountable. And I think that's kind of where our productivity suite comes into that. Uh, so, so nothing, nothing crazy that's, uh, up and coming that I've seen recently, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be, uh, <laughs> I'll, find some, I'll go check some more after this, but what do you, have you seen anything cool that you, you noticed or what? I know you're really, you're really in on that. Seems well, well. there are a lot. I, I keep an eye on lifetime deals and all that stuff. So yeah. I was thinking of buying wish list plugin, but then I didn't buy it because I I personally, even though I'm a WordPress person and I've, I do client websites with Lyftra LMS courses, uh, you know, member press and all that stuff. But for my own courses, I don't use WordPress. I prefer hosted solutions like Teachable because mm. I don't have time to manage security transactions. Teachable, yeah. does, Teachable is like plug and play solution. Like it will manage everything for you. You don't have to worry about it. Just pay them. What like I'm on basic plan, which is hardly like three fifty dollars a year, and yeah. which is nothing if you have a course of like hundred, two hundred dollars. Just make two sales and you're done for a year. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but uh, it, it takes all the headaches away there too, and lets you focus on other revenue drivers or whatnot. Or... Exactly, it's not that I cannot do it. I do custom sites, custom course sites for my clients, and I know the headaches that come along with it. But I just build them. I don't manage them because I'm not interested in managing client stuff to be honest because i'm not 
I'm not, I don't want a 24 hour sword on my head. Hey, something broke, please help me. So that's not, I, I don't fit in that box to be honest. Exactly. No. And that's the same as, as like we were talking about wrapping it full circle of the image optimization aspect. Why do it if you don't have to, what focus your energy on different things. Is that like you said, not that you can't go into Photoshop, optimize every image, not that you can't manage this uh, custom infrastructure for your courses or your clients, but just take the easy route, take the the automated solution and and, And uh, a trusted one there. And it's about saving time. Like the time that I would save on not managing WordPress update security, I can invest that time on building something new or learning something new or being more productive. So exactly, again, this is a balance that people have to discover themselves. Like even if I tell them do use this, use that, it's still, you have to fall down once to get up. That's, that's the reality of life. No, and exactly. If you ask few questions about mailer light convert key to a new person for them, it's like an alien language, but for someone who's been into the business for 10 years for them, it's like, Oh, tell me something new. Right. So yeah, it's all about what you're talking and what's the audience all about. Okay, James. So before we wrap this episode, where can people find you and what can you help people with? I'm sure it's all image optimization, but still. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, people can find us, like I said, we have the live chat support that goes directly to me uh, and, and to my inbox as well. So if you go to wpcompress.com, uh, you'll see a little, a little face or chat box in the bottom corner. Feel free to reach out, comment, what, what, even what you thought of this, uh, this interview here, and, uh, and I'll pass the remarks on as well, some kind remarks, hopefully. Uh, and... <laughs> And if you need anything else, obviously you can find me there. I'm pretty active, um, whether it be Facebook or email or whatever it is, I'm happy to help. And, uh, and yeah, I think the, the biggest thing we can help you with is getting, uh, making your websites more approachable. That's what we really want to do because if people come to it, they're waiting three, five seconds. I've seen 20 seconds even you're gone or, or you're frustrated, especially with the attention spans people have nowadays. Uh, we want to make, like I said, make your website more approachable so that people actually read your text, read your images, all that hard work you built into creating an awesome website. We want to make sure that they can see that from anywhere around the world and we'll take care of all the hard work for you. Uh, we have all the agency features and tools like that. So we want to make your, give you all the credit, make your life as easy as possible and use me as a resource. I'm happy to help however I can, whether it be configuring settings, whether it be uh, recommended formats, or if you just want to talk, I'm, I'm always there. So happy to help. Awesome. Thank you for your time. It was amazing talking to you. Have a good day. You as well. well. Thank you.